The hearing will return to order. We now have uh, Dr. Roger Pelkey. I've pronounced it correctly. I see by your name, not by your head nodding. Yeah, you got it. That's and uh, then after that, Dr. Spencer. Please proceed, Dr. Pelkey. Yeah, thank you uh, uh, to the senators and to the committee uh, for having me to give this testimony today. Um, I started uh, working on extreme weather and climate in 1993 uh, at the National Center for Atmospheric Research when I started a postdoc position. I'm currently a professor of environmental studies at the University of Colorado. Now I'm going to give you seven what I call take-home points. And it's important to emphasize that um, each of these points are consistent with what's been reported by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the U.S. Global Change Research Program, and the broader peer-reviewed literature. In fact, I find it fascinating that I'm the ninth witness out of ten, and I'm the first one to invoke the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change at a hearing on climate change. Here are my seven points. First, it is misleading and just plain incorrect to claim that disasters associated with hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, or drought have increased on climate timescales either in the United States or globally. It is further incorrect to associate the increase in costs of disasters with the emission of greenhouse gases. Second point, globally, weather-related losses have not increased since 1990 as a proportion of GDP. They've actually decreased by about 25 percent. And insured catastrophe losses have not increased as a proportion of GDP since 1960. Hurricanes, point three, hurricanes have not increased in the U.S. in frequency, intensity, or normalized damage since at least 1900. The same holds for tropical cyclones globally since at least 1970 when we have good data. Fourth, floods have not increased in the U.S. in frequency or intensity since at least 1950. And remarkably, flood losses as a percentage of U.S. GDP have dropped by 75% since 1940. Fifth, tornadoes have not increased in frequency, intensity, or normalized damage since at least 1950. And there's some evidence to suggest they've actually declined. Sixth, Drought has, and here I quote the IPCC, for the most part become shorter, less frequent, and cover a smaller portion of the U.S. over the last century. Globally, and I quote from a recent paper in Nature, there has been little change in drought over the past 60 years. Seventh, now this, these trends being the case, um, it is nonetheless a fact that the absolute cost of disasters will increase significantly in coming years, no matter what you think about climate change or a human role in it, simply due to greater wealth and populations exposed in locations uh, that are prone to extremes. So disasters will continue to be an important focus of policy, irrespective of how climate change evolves. Now, let me say, I have a few, few statements in addition to these kind of factual scientific ones. Um, and as we've seen this morning, because the issue is so deeply politicized, um, there's a few points to make so that my testimony is not misconstrued. First, humans do influence the climate system in profound ways, including through the emission of carbon dioxide from the combustion of fossil fuels. And I would point you to the first uh, working group report from the IPCC, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, uh, for discussion of that. It is true that researchers have detected and in some cases attributed a human influence um, in measures of climate extremes that go beyond those few that I just mentioned, um, specifically surface temperatures and precipitation trends. The inability to detect and attribute changes in hurricanes, floods, tornadoes, and drought does not mean that human-caused climate change is not real or of concern. It does mean, however, that some activists, politicians, journalists, corporate and government agency representatives, and even scientists who should know better have made claims that are just unsupportable based on evidence and research. It's my view that such false claims undermine the credibility of arguments for action on climate change, and to the extent that these false claims confuse those who are making decisions related to extreme events, they could, in fact, lead to poor decision making. Now, a considerable body of research projects that in the future, various extremes may, in fact, become more frequent or intense as a direct consequence of the human em emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. Um, there are exceptions. The IPCC suggests that winter storms may become less likely. Our research and that of others suggest that assuming that these projections are correct, just taking them as uh, true projections of the future, it will be many decades, perhaps longer, before the signal of human-caused climate change can be detected in the statistics of hurricanes. Now, to the extent that the statistical properties of other phenomena, like floods, tornadoes, and droughts are the same, this, that conclusion will hold. Let me conclude by emphasizing that what I've reported to you today 
is consistent with, what, with what's been reported by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And in my written testimony, I've included direct quotes from that. Um, this is mainstream science. It shouldn't be controversial, uh, supported by peer-reviewed research, uh, and I hope that it's of some use. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Palkia.